Hello and welcome to Baichu's IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. With reference to Lingaraja temple, which of the following statements is or correct? It is a Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. It is built in limestone and is a classic example of Kalinga style of architecture. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is one only. Why? That is because this was not built out of limestone but instead it was of red stone. And the second part of the option is correct. That is because this is a classic example of Kalinga style of architecture. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given in this article. Let's look at some of the facts with respect to the Lingaraja temple. This is a Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. It was built by King Jajati Keshari of Somavams dynasty. The main tower of this temple measures about 180 feet in height. It is built in redstone and is a classic example of Kalinga style of architecture. So do remember, this happens to be one of the oldest temples that we see in Bhubaneswa in the state of Odisha. The temple is divided into four sections called as Garbagruha, which is the Sanctum Sanctorum, Yagnashala, which is the Hall of the Yagnas, Bhogamandap, the Hall of the Offering, and Natyashala, which happens to be the Hall of Dance. These are some of the important factual data we have to remember from the examination point of view. Now let's look into the next practice question. Consider the following statements about electronic voting machine. EVMs were first used in Tamil Nadu in the year 1982. EVMs can cater to a maximum of 64 candidates including NOTA. EVMs and VVPAT require electricity. Which of the above statements is or incorrect? Since it is asking for the incorrect statement, the answer to this is 1 and 3 only. Why? That is because the EVMs were first introduced not in the state of Tamil Nadu, but it was in the state of Kerala, where in one of the constituencies called as Parur. The third option is wrong. That is because the EVMs and VVPAT do not require electricity, but they run on batteries. Why have we taken this practice question? Because of the reference given in this article. This article says EC files FIR over fake news on hacking of EVMs. Whenever there is elections that take place, whether it is at the state level or at the central level, what do we actually see? After the elections are conducted, the election commission declares the results. This is when the political parties which have lost the elections immediately start blaming the EVM. But time after time, repeatedly, we have the election commission of India which has clearly clarified that since these electronic voting machines are not connected to the internet, they are not hackable. In fact, it has also asked people in case there are any technicians, in case there is any scientific personnel to come over, take it as a challenge and prove that this particular EVM machine can be hacked. Number of technicians have failed as well and the Election Commission of India has repeatedly said that this particular electronic voting machine cannot be hacked. In the present situation, we have the Election Commission of India which has currently said since there are fake news that are being spread on the social media media, the person or an organization which is spreading this particular information will be booked under section 500 of the IPC which pertains to punishment for defamation and under sections 128 and 134 of the representation of the People's Act in reference to the EVM machine. So what we have to understand is that EVM cannot be hacked as per the Election Commission of India. We also have to have a fair bit of an idea about the VVPAT as well. What is this VVPAT? This is a machine where we would be able to verify whether the person who's casted his vote is it falling for the right candidate or not. So whenever you go to the polling booth, you press a particular button where you vote for a political candidate, we have this particular machine where it initially shows the candidate's name, the party symbol we have casted our vote for, and finally the candidate number as shown in this picture. There are some myths and realities about VVPAT machine as well. What are those? VVPAT slips are collected by the OTA? No, this will not be collected by the OTA but it will be visible for the OTA for nearly 7 seconds. The second myth says VVPAT print will not last more than 50 to 30 days. This is incorrect says the Election Commission of India. The print on the thermal paper used lasts for more than 5 years according to the actual facts 
as given by the election commission of india the third myth says vv pat takes photo of the voter thereby compromising the secrecy of the vote this is once again incorrect as the vv pat has no camera and it cannot take any photograph of the voter also remember we have one of the videos which is about half an hour which has been recorded by samacha which speaks entirely about what is this evm concept all about kindly look into the video for the clear cut analysis of the evm mission now let's look into the next practice question exercise this click recently seen in news is a joint military exercise between india and is it kazakhstan tajikistan turkmenistan or uzbekistan the answer to this is uzbekistan why have we taken this practice question because of the reference given in the vib article so kindly remember this exercise this click is a joint military exercise between india as well as uzbekistan when was the first edition conducted the first edition was conducted in the year 2019 and in the year 2021 this happens to be the second edition of the joint military exercise what will happen under this exercise we will have contingents from india as well as from uzbekistan where they'll share their expertise and skills with each other so that this will enhance on the military as well as the diplomatic ties now let's look into the next practice question which of the following statements about gandhara style of art is or correct it is uniquely associated with greek or roman style of art one of the examples is the bamiyan buddha statues the striking feature of the gandhara school of art shows a very realistic and natural depiction of features in perfection which of the statements are correct the answer to this is 1 2 and 3 why have we taken this practice question because of the reference given in the indian express article kindly remember when it comes to the preliminary and also with respect to the mains this can be one of the key questions what are the differences between the gandhara school of art and the mathura school of art the most important factor is the region so where was it being operated it was in the gandhara region when it comes to the gandhara school of art and when it comes to the mathura school of art it was in mathura were there any outside influences to this particular art form yes when it comes to the gandhara school of art we have the greek and possibly macedonian influence but when it comes to the mathura school of art it was entirely indigenous and there was no external influence when it comes to the religious influences the gandhara school of art was entirely focused on the buddhism but when it comes to the mathura school of art it was focused on hinduism buddhism as well as jainism as well what were the materials used bluish and gray sandstone and gray sandstone when it comes to the gandhara school of art but when it comes to mathura school of art it used spotted red stone now when it comes to the indian express article this speaks about the bamiyan buddhas this happens to be one of the examples of the gandhara school of art there were two 6th century monumental statues of gautama buddha in the bamiyan valley of the central afghanistan the bamiyan buddhas were of great examples of a confluence of gupta sasanian and hellenistic artistic styles salsal and shamama as they were called by the locals in afghanistan rose to heights of 55 and 38 meters respectively effectively and were said to be male and female salsal means light shines through the universe shamama means queen mother following the fall of the bomian buddhas unesco included the remains in its list in the year 2003 why was there a fall of this particular buddha statue that is because back in the 1990s and up until 2000s what we have is the rule of the taliban the taliban had extreme viewpoints they did not tolerate any of the other religions just minorities as well this is where because this particular region was known for its cultural diversity they were not able to tolerate during this very period they also banned television conducted public executions and they did not let women and girls go educate themselves as well and press media were not even let to speak out against taliban it was during this particular period where this particular region was known for cultural diversity which hosted this particular the buddha statue was completely eliminated and after 2001 this particular bamiyan buddha was included under unesco's world heritage site it is this that we have to understand in reference to this article now let's look into the next practice question to obtain full benefits of demographic dividend what should india do 
promote skill development, introduce more social security schemes, reduce infant mortality rate, privatization of higher education. The answer to this is promoting skill development. This happens to be a previous year question. What is it about demographic dividend? This happens to be individuals or a section of the population where these individuals can be used in the labor force, which is where we would be able to increase the productivity in the country. And as a result, whenever this section of the population is provided with skill development, they can become an asset for the country. And in case we are not able to provide the skill development to such sections of the population, they can also become liability as well. So this question says that if we are able to promote skill development, we are able to provide jobs to them, we are effectively making use of the working population, which is also called as the demographic dividend. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day is about Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute. The Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute was established by the government of India under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare and later it joined the Indian Council of Agriculture Research Family in the year 1967. The institute has emerged as a leading tropical marine fisheries research institute in the world. So it is basically into the research of fishery sector. The headquarters of the ICAR CMFRI is located in Kochi in Kerala. Kindly remember this factual data. It can be important from your preliminary examination point of view. Now when we look into the article, the article has given certain statistics. According to the report published by the Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, it has gone ahead and said that when it comes to India, India is now the second largest shark fishing nation in the world following Indonesia. So this article here is focusing on various threats that in reference to the shark and it also speaks about the conservation efforts. What are the various threats when it comes to this particular issue? When it comes to the shark population, they become the accidental catch for the fishermen. Intentionally, the fishermen may not want to catch the sharks, but because they also go ahead and catch the fish, this can become an accidental catch, which is the first major threat. Apart from this, the skin of the shark is used in the leather industry. It is used for making of the bags. It is used in the making of the boots as well and at the same time its liver is also used for the oil production. In order to overcome all these threats what we have is the Wildlife Trust of India which has come up with a program called as the Whale Shark Conservation Program. What is this program all about? This is where the Wildlife Trust of India engages directly with the fishing community. As of now the fishing community may not have the awareness about the ecological impact, the environmental impact of the shark community and as a result what they have is direct interaction with the fishing community. So the Wildlife Trust of India creates a particular awareness about this particular issue, the ecological impact and the environmental impact, how they enter into street place, they give them an idea and they also conduct workshop about the ecological impact of this particular issue. Apart from this, they also rope in the local leaders in this particular area. Let's say for example, the fishing community may not listen to the outsiders. So what did the Wildlife Trust of India do? They started roping in the local leaders so that these local leaders could say them what is the damage that they are causing to the environment and ultimately all the issues with respect to the shark was sorted out. Therefore, in order to bear the fruits of the conservation program, as of now, we have the whale sharks which are included under the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act. More sharks will also have to be introduced so that more species under the act save them from extinction is what is this article all about. It is this that we have to understand in reference to this article. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.